By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at an Alpha 40 League match and I'm just really excited to share this match with you because it's beautiful to look at Alpha decks, at least that's my opinion. Um, we are going to look at Martin who plays with a Fajuran Enchantress deck which is pretty ballsy in Alpha 40 League and his deck has more cards than 40 by the way, spoiler alert. And he's taking on Niels aka the Dragon King, I mean his deck has 6 Alpha Sheevan Dragons, it's insane, 6 of them. Oh man, I'm just really stoked to show you this uh, this match. Now, um, before we go to the game, of course, I'll first do a quick deck tech. Now, if you want to skip that, if you want to go straight to the action, I completely understand. Please check the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, it will take you straight to the action. And as for now, I am going to start with the deck of Martin. So let's take a look at this for Jern Enchantress Brew. And here we see the deck of Martin. Now the first card we have to discuss, of course, is Fajuran Enchantress. Three of those are in this deck. And Fajuran Enchantress is a card that reads, whenever you cast an enchantment, you get to draw a card. It is as simple as that, right? So we do see some enchantments in this deck. Three Circle of Protections red main. Remember, he's playing mono red today. So that could be super handy. Um, actually, there is no sideboard in this format. So it's always main. Anyway, um, Three castles, four wild groves, and also a fast bond and a lure. I think those are all the enchantments in the deck here. Then he's also got some mana ramping going on in the form of Birds of Paradise. He's got some Lanara Elves in there, so maybe he wants to do that so he can play out his Virgin Enchantress turn two. We also see an Orcish Artillery in this deck. So Orcish Artillery, you can tap to do two damage to any target and then three damage to yourself. Now the cool thing is, if you have your Circle of Protection red, which he has, you can actually use your COP red to prevent that damage. It's like one of the oldest combos in the in the book, right? It's it's in Alpha. So and Orcish Artillery is quite good in Alpha because it's only one red and one to cast for one three with this ability. Where in in all the reprints later of Orcish Artillery, you have to pay two red and one. So it was kind of a misprint that you could get this creature for two mana. So it's kind of overpowered. Now we also see in this deck two Lay Druids, which is quite interesting. You can tap a Lay Druid to untap target land. So I guess that's a bit of more ramp that he has in his deck. And then we also see some defense in the form Wall of Swords. I think Wall of Swords is probably the best wall in old school. One white and three for a 3-5 flyer. And of course, if you have those castles around, it gets even bigger. Castle gives plus O plus two to all your uh, creatures for as long as they're not tapped or attacking. So that means that your Wall of Swords are now three sevens. So that's pretty good. And then when we go to the right side of the deck, we see some amazing cards. Like all these cards are amazing, but check out the right side of this deck picture. It is insane, right? We see two Sarah Angels, a Sheevan Dragon. So both of these players are playing with Sheevan Dragon. And we see a beautiful, big, cool, Force of Nature, and I'm, I'm, I'm just hoping, Martin, that you get to cast the Force of Nature. That would be epic. And then, of course, why not? We also see an Alpha Black Lotus in this deck. It's insane. It blows my mind looking at it. We also see the Hive and the Hive tokens on this photo. I think that's really cool. And we see a Chaos Orb, a Jam Day Tome. So this is really like a control deck, right? For as far as it can be a control deck in this format. But I think it's really a, a control deck with that the hive, with the castles. And remember, when he makes a 1-1 one, one flyer with the hive, because of the castles, those flyers will actually be 1-3 as long as they're not attacking and not uh, getting tapped. So they actually make pretty good blockers as well. And it makes a really nice combination with the hurricane. There's one hurricane in this deck, hurricane sorcery, one green and X. And that X for each one mana that you pay deals one damage to each player, but also one damage to each creature with flying. So if he has a scenario where he's got, for example, two castles, so he's beefing up the toughness of his creatures with plus four, also his flyers, then it's kind of safe for him to cast a huge like hurricane, kill all the small uh, flyers of his opponent, and his flyers, they stay alive. So it's kind of some nice synergy in this deck. What I like about Martin's deck is, especially for an alpha deck, it's got a lot of layers, right? So I think that's really cool. Anyway, this is the deck of Martin. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Niels. 
And here we see the deck of Niels, and I am Niels. I am super jealous. I mean, I want to own. <laughs> I want to own a black border Shivan dragon so bad. I mean, I can't complain. I have an unlimited one, so I should be happy with that. But looking at your deck photo, I am drooling over this six Shivan dragons alpha. One is signed as well. That's just insane. He's also playing with two dragon whelps. I mean, it's pretty clear what this deck wants to do burn the opponent down with dragons and of course he's got some direct damage in there as well and he's playing with the mana flare so mana flare is an enchantment for one red and two um, that reads whenever you tap your land for mana it produces one extra of the mana it produces so if you would tap your mountain for one red it now gives you two red the thing is mana flare also works for your opponent so it can be quite a risky card now obviously in this deck it is just ideal right because it's going to make your shivan dragon even better because you can pump it for one red give it plus one plus oh so you can make it super big same thing goes for your dragon whelp but he's also playing with two fireballs and two disintegrate so those cards get much better as well now i do know that niels kind of has some of his own rules when he's playing and i believe but correct me if i'm wrong niels i believe you don't play direct damage on your opponent you only use your direct damage to remove creatures from your opponent so we're just going to see in this match if that is really happening, but I believe that is the way you play the game. Um, then we also have some artifacts on the right and maybe a nice artifact to talk about is force field because force field is an artifact that you actually don't see a lot in um, in regular old school, but it's actually quite good in alpha and alpha beta formats. And what it does, it's an artifact for three. You can pay one and it says the next time an unblocked creature of your choice will deal combat damage to you this turn, prevent all but one of that damage. So for example, Juggernaut is like super big in this format, but with the force fields, you don't really have to worry about that. You can just tap one, target the Juggernaut, and you would only take one damage from the Juggernaut coming in instead of five points of damage. So this card is pretty good. And actually, force field is also really good against the Sheevan Dragon in Martin's deck, and of course, the force of nature in Martin's deck. So, you know, it's, it's quite good. I'm really looking forward to this matchup. The only thing I slightly worry about is that Niels will completely trample over Martin because Martin's deck is a bit more like complex. He needs some more time. And, you know, what if Niels goes really fast? I hope not because I just want to see a lot of silly stuff and a lot of really cool Sheevan dragons. So um, let's go to the game and, uh, and see what we're going to get. Go Sheevans! Game number one, here we go. So we've got Martin sitting on the left. So he's playing with the Enchantress deck. He's on the play here. And of course he can draw a card because we're playing Alpha 40 League Rules. Uh, and the thing about Alpha 40 League Rules, by the way, is that you cannot take a mulligan like you would normally do. You can only take a mulligan if you have no lands in hand or only lands in hand. Anyway, uh, Niels also got his first turn just playing a basic mountain going through a sweet stack of altars, by the way. I believe they're Martin's. Martin's got a lot of altars, including that uh, planes he's got on the battlefield. It's an altar by Jesper Mirforce, I believe. There's a mountain. And uh, I think I saw a COP red. Ooh, there's a COP red. He could play it out. That would be nasty. That would be nasty. As you can see, I skipped a little bit of the video because they uh, were actually talking about the beautiful altars. <laughs> so they stopped playing. So, But now they're back at the game and um, Martin is playing out a COP red. This is already devastating for uh, for Niels. I believe Chaos Orb is the only card he's got against enchantments. And um, yeah, I just hope for Niels that maybe... I mean, he also plays Power Search, I believe. So Power Search could work as well. Although I'm not sure. Yeah, I think he plays Power Search. It wasn't very clear on the deck photo, but I'm just thinking about it now. I believe he's got Power Search in the deck. So Power Search could work. No, it doesn't work against uh, COP Red, actually. I'm talking about Mana Barbs. That would be a good card against COP Red. Anyway, this is, uh, this is difficult for Niels staring down at this COP Red. Remember, his deck kind of starts working from turn three and upwards because then he can play a Mana Flare. Okay, we do see a bolt here. Oh, and he's bolting Martin. Remember, I said in the deck deck that usually he doesn't use direct damage on players, but I think he changed his mind when he saw, when he saw the COP red. That's fair enough, Niels. You know, I get it. I would do the same. Oh, and actually Martin missing a land drop. He's not finding any lands. Oh, he's got a lot of rare elves in hand, but no uh, a green source. And here we see Niels playing out a mana flare. So that means lots of mana for everybody. But there's a disenchant, interesting choice, playing a disenchant on the mana flare. And the reason I'm saying it's interesting, one of the things that I believe Martin could have done was take his turn, then he could have tapped 
his mana, generate two planes and two mountains, he could have cast a disenchant and still have two mana left. Possibly take advantage of that. And here we just see a pass turn by Niels as well, not doing anything. So this is quite a slow start. And you see that more often in the Alpha 40 League because, yeah, I mean, you cannot take the mulligans that you normally would take. So if you just have a one land hand, you've got to keep it, you know, and that sometimes leads to a bit of a slower play. And that's exactly what we're seeing here, actually. Both uh, opponents kind of having mana issues. But there's land number four, and there's the first creature being cast off the game, a Dragon Whelp by Nielsen. Of course, that Dragon Whelp cannot do much because of that COP red of Martin, but at least it's something. And I guess the good news here for Niels is that Martin's really stuck on land, so if he can just find enough. Look at that, another COP red. Does he have two COP reds in hand? Oh, that's insane. Remember, Martin's playing with three COP reds in total because he also plays with Orcish Artillery, and those two cards go hand in hand. And um, what is Niels going to do? Drawing the card for turn. Can he find some more creatures? If he just can put up more creatures than uh, uh, Martin has lands, and he can kind of start doing, uh, doing damage. Tapping four again. Another Dragon Whelp. Okay, that's pretty good news. But, I mean, if you're Niels, you really want to go to six mana as fast as possible to start casting those Shivan Dragons. He's playing six in total, right? That's kind of insane. I believe I also see a Wild Growth in the hand of Martin here. So he's very unlucky with his draw so far. All he needs is a Forest to kind of get out of this. But as long as he cannot find it, there's little he can do. At least he's got the COP Red to protect him. Going through his hand again, now he has to choose what to discard. I believe one of those cards, I'm not quite sure, but it looks like one of those cards is Regrowth. So at least what he puts in the bin he can get back. And we see Niels looking at the COP Red, trying to find a loophole there. Yeah, I think the best thing he can do is just play more creatures. I don't believe he plays any Stone Rains. Like Stone Rain could also be a solution, right? Just Stone Raining all the lands of your opponent. Discarding his other COP red. So at least that's kind of some good news here for, for Neil seeing, um, you know, seeing him discard the other COP reds. There is a soul ring. That means next turn he's got six mana. And I do believe he's got a Sheevan in hand there. There I see one Sheevan dragon, two Sheevan dragons actually. So he can start dropping down those Sheevans. And then as long as Martin stays on just two lands, he's going to be in trouble. wonder what's going to happen. We also see a Shatter there. Discarding the Wall of Swords. Tapping six. Shivan Dragon! Alpha Edition. Absolutely beautiful. There's the attack and there's of course the prevent damage by Martin. So he's going to untap, take his turn and he's finding a forest. Finally! Now he can do something. The question is what is he going to do? It looks like he wants to cast a Wild Growth on the forest, so he's got extra green. It does mean there's a little opening for Niels here. If he attacks with his complete Dragon Armada, he can get some damage in. Martin currently sitting still safe at 17. He could, of course, also choose to first attack, let him prevent, and then play a big Disintegrate, for example. Instead, he's pumping one of his whelps, of course, the one that's not being prevented by the COP. So he's dealing five points of damage. That is not too bad. You know, we see Martin here dropping to 12, playing a Black Lotus. And this is kind of hard, right, for Martin. Because if he taps his land out to play something, it means he's going to take more damage. So a potential scenario here would be that he actually sacks his Lotus to make his place, keep his land open for a COP Red. I mean, he is on 12 and he doesn't want to take more damage. He has that Lay Druid there. That must be tempting for him to play. Lay Druid goes very well with Wild Growth because Lay Druid untaps a land. So he can use his Lay Druid to target the forest that has uh, uh, the Wild Growth on it. And then it can untap and it can generate two mana again. So it's kind of like a small Candelabra mana um, engine there for Martin. I wonder if he's going to play out anything at all. It must be also be tempting to just pass. He also has a Sarah Angel, but I think at this point... That's not too interesting because it's just going to die um, by Dragon Breath. So I think the best solution here is or to play nothing or maybe play that Lay Druid. Looks like he's going to tap his lands. Tapping two green and a plains. Two green and a white. No untapping again. I wonder what he's going to do here. Pointing at the mountain. 
a little bit in the tank here. He wants to play, I think, his Lay Druid and maybe his Lana or Elves or Birds of Paradise. You know, if he gets enough mana, you know, he can he, he doesn't have to worry anymore about having enough mana for the COP Red open. He can just play his game. And I think that's what he's going for. There we see a Birds of Paradise and a Lay Druid. But I do see a Fireball there. And is that an Earthquake? But an Earthquake, of course, is not going to work against a bird. But I do see a Fireball there in hand by uh, by Niels. And how cool is it, by the way, that we see somebody sack a Black Lotus for three green. <laughs> I mean, when does that happen? And then use the green mana to cast a Lay Druid. And, of course, a Mana Birds, but a Lay Druid. I think it's super cool. It's such a, such a fun format here to see these cards. Staring down at the uh, Fireball. I mean, Fireball, oh, interesting, playing a Power Search. So Power Search is a complex card, right? Two red to cast for an enchantment that reads, before untapping lands at the start of a turn, each player takes one damage for each land he or she controls, but did not tap during the previous turn. So it's kind of this weird card. So what you basically want to do is make sure you spent all your mana at the end of the turn. And of course, for Niels, that is super easy because he's got dragons, right? He can just pump the dragons, put all the red mana he's got left over, put it in his Sheevan Dragon. So this is really a good combination. Power Surge with dragons. So he's going to play four. He's going to play a Fireball, killing the creatures here. So Lay Druid and Birds are burned. They're, they're ashes now. And I mean, yeah, he wants to attack, but he also knows that Martin has three mana open. He is going to attack anyway. I think that's nice. That's what dragons want to do, right? The dragons are bad. They want to attack the opponent. But of course, Martin can easily here prevent all the damage. And talking about like preventing damage, I really wonder how this works with the power surge because I'll have the current Oracle text for you on the screen as we see uh, Martin here taking his turn. Maybe let's first see what he's going to do. Okay, he's going to play planes. Perhaps Niels is actually looking up how this power surge works under alpha rules because if you look at the current oracle text it says at the beginning of each player's upkeep power surge deals x damage to that player where x is the number of untapped lands they controlled at the beginning of this turn so if you would use the current oracle text um you can actually in during the turn of Niels, you can put all your your mana into your circle of protection red to prevent the damage but if you're playing it according to the rules text on the actual card which is what I think they do in a lot of situations in alpha rule sets, then actually there's no way for Martin to kind of prevent the damage with COP Red and not take damage from Power Search, right? Because that would mean that Martin needs to tap all his lands down at the end of the turn. So it's going to be super interesting because I see Martin has passed turn, it seems. There's a Mana Flare, by the way, from Neil. So it's going to be super interesting to see if Martin's going to take damage there we see a tap of six mana. There's a Shivan Dragon, number two. And um, I mean, I'm just really interested to see what's going to happen now. I mean, is he going to take four points of damage? Look at that, he is. So they are following the text on the power surge. And I think that's really in the spirit of the game. So in this case, power surge is the ultimate weapon against COP Red. I think that's just super cool to see. And yeah, I really wonder, uh, you know, what Martin can do here. So he's playing for Jern Enchantress, which is fantastic to see on the board. He needs to tap one more land, by the way, I believe. But uh, this is super cool, super cool stuff. And uh, yeah, what else can he do? I mean, this power surge is going to kill him. This is a big problem. Oh, of course, he doesn't have to tap an extra because the Mana Flare is on board. Sorry, because of the Mana Flare, the Force is going to produce an extra green. And because of the Wild Growth, it produces an extra green. Wow, this Alpha is more complicated than I thought. <laughs> Let me know, by the way. I mean, if you're an Alpha expert, uh, how, this, how this works, if I'm correct. You know, I apologize if I'm incorrect. But it looks like they're really kind of using the original text on Power Search, which, again, I find really in this spirit of alpha there we see another mountain so just a lot of mountains remember the cool thing is with power search and dragons he can just pump all the mana that he wants all the red mana that he wants into his dragons so that is just super cool 
tapping four mana here. And there's a disintegrate. And is it going to be on the face or on the enchantress? It's going to be on the enchantress, it seems. I mean, I would expect Niels to play it on the enchantress. Exactly. And then, I mean, he, he might as well attack, right? Because he only has three lands, so he's got one open. Neil's going for his hand again. Maybe he's contemplating on playing another Shivan. Is that another Shivan in his hand? That would be insane. Three Alpha Shivan Dragons on the board in one game. I think they're now discussing how the COP Red works. And now they're discussing the power search again. <laughs> I think what they're talking about is, can I use the COP Red mana to prevent the damage dealt by the power surge. I think you can. I mean, but then again, you have the same problem because then if you tap out to prevent the attacks, you know, if you keep mana, oh yeah, I mean, he does have a mana flare. Man, this is complicated. I'm just, I'm also curious to see now what they decided, what they're gonna do. <laughs> Because I think the discussion here is, okay, before I take damage, but he is taking, he is taking damage here for the power surge again. So he's going to five. I mean, there's not really a way for Martin to win this, I think. I mean, who knew that power surge had kind of this effect on the game? It is so interesting. Yeah, that's it. Okay, he's saying you've won this one. There's no way that I can get back. This was a complicated game one. I mean, that power surge in combination with the COP red, it really had an interesting uh, vibe. Anyway, uh, both players are going to shuffle up and uh, let's let's just have a look and, and see what's going to happen in, in, in game two because I have no idea at this point. Game number two, here we go. So it's Martin on the play after losing that first game. Look at this, cracking a lotus to cast a castle. Okay, this is a first. Man, that is funny. Anyway, um, yeah, using a Lotus to clack, to play a castle, why not? Why not? Let's see if Niels can do anything spectacular. I guess he can just uh, putting the land out and pass turn. There we see a forest from Martin in a pass. There is a lightning bolt on the life total here of Martin dropping to 17. And I remember, castle gives plus O plus 2 to all creatures that are untapped and not attacking. Here we see a lay druid for three mana. So Lay Druid, you can tap to untap target land. There we see a quick disintegrate though on the Lay Druid. And uh, you know, that's just too bad. Let the Lay Druid live, man, it's a cool card. But I guess it's uh, it's toast now. Oh, wait a minute, this is fun. Martin actually pointing out to the castle. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. I forgot all about the castle. So it gets the bonus, so it's actually a one three and he casts a Disintegrate for one. So that means that the Lay Druid is alive and kicking. There's nothing wrong with the Lay Druid because he's in his castle, he is protected. So one damage cannot harm him. That is really funny. That is really flavorful. And uh, it looks like that maybe they kind of, you know, stopped after that. They said, okay, you know what? Okay, they're, they're, they're back, they're back. I thought for a moment that maybe they just stopped and said, you know what, whatever, <laughs> but they're back. Oh, this is so cool. I've never seen this. I've never seen a Lay Druid being safe because he's up in the castle. Too funny. Uh, tapping four here. There is a Wall of Swords, 3-5 flying, but now, of course, a 3-7 because of that castle. And as we can see, Niels kind of uh, has a mana problem here. He needs at least three mana to play a Mana Flare, and then he can kind of get his deck going. And there we see an Orcish Artillery, so it's a 1-3 creature. I wonder if Martin's gonna attack here because then he's putting his uh, Lay Druid in danger and he's choosing not to, just passing turn. So that Orcish Artillery is now also a 1-5, of course, because of the castle bonus. So this is, I mean, this is kind of tough for Niels. Again, not finding any lands. He has to discard a Sheevan Dragon here, that's too bad. 
But luckily he's got five more in his deck, so he'll find more later in the game, I'm sure. Tapping four, gonna tap the Lay Druid, so that he's got five mana, using it to cast the Hive. So the Hive is an artifact that for five and tap, ah, oh, there's a quick shatter though, for five and tap, uh, you can make one one flyers with it. I believe it's the only token maker in Alpha. And again a pass, so Neil's getting really annoyed with the lack of lands, which is understandable. You just want to draw lands, and I hope you do, Niels, because I'm just hoping to see an actual game here. Although it's already a lot of fun just to see these cards. There we see a Wild Grove on a forest, and there's an attack for two, so he's gonna to drop to 18 here. It does mean that both creatures no longer have protection from the castle. So I wonder if Niels is gonna burn them now. A bolt is enough for the artillery, and of course a disintegrate or fireball for one is enough. No, he doesn't have it. He's got to discard again. So frustrating here for Niels, really stuck on two mountains, which is not where you want to be. But let's see if, uh, if Martin can bring some more spectacle to this game. Attack for two first. Niels dropping to 16, and just passing turn here. He's got tons of mana though, but... Apparently nothing to play out. There we see a fireball on the Lay Druid. Cannot target the artillery. Well, he can, but he doesn't have enough mana to kill it. Remember, artillery has three toughness, a 1-3 creature. And I talked about it in the deck deck. It's really sweet. The artillery from Alpha only costs one uh, red and one to cast. And there's another castle. Humongous bonus. This is so funny. And the artillery from the Prince after, just to finish my story, that has a casting cost of two red and one. So it's, it's really unique. There are little differences like that. For example, the Elfish Archer in Alpha, I believe, is a 1-2 first strike. And of course, it should be a 2-1 first strike. So they change it afterwards as well. Here we see a mountain. Okay, so now can Niels play a Mana Flare? There is the Mana Flare. Okay, this is huge. If the Mana Flare can stick, it means that next turn, he can start playing out Shivan Dragons, uh, you know, Dragon Whelps and the like, he can play huge fireballs. I mean, the Mana Flare is super important here for Niels. And I wonder if, if Martin has a Disenchant. Remember, in Game 1, he Disenchanted the Mana Flare very quickly. I don't think he has a, a Disenchant. He does have another Castle in his hand. That is really, really funny. Is he going to cast Castle number 3? That is sick. That is, this is so cool. I mean, this is just fantastic. And now I'm trying to dig into my memory, thinking about his deck list. Does he have a veteran bodyguard in his deck? Because I love veteran bodyguard with castle. It's so flavorful. Anyway, here we see, ooh, there's the power search again. Again, and this is really bad news here for Martin. So he's going to take damage, three damage in total for the three untapped lands from the power search, dropping to 14. This is bad news for Martin. Is he going to lose again and now to the power search? I do see a Tranquility there, so we can cast a Tranquility. Is that a Tranquility or is it just a land? No, maybe it's a land. It's sometimes kind of hard to see because they're altered. I think this is a Plains though. Does he really want to play it out? Maybe it's not the best idea because when he plays it out, he can just take more damage from the Power Surge. Exactly, putting it back in hand, I think that's a good decision. I mean, he's got to play out something with the Power Surge on the board. Tapping a green. Okay, there's a fast bond. At least it saves him one point of damage. Beautiful art by Mark Poole. So fast bond is an enchantment that, you know, allows you to play out more land. For every land, after your first land drop, uh, you have to take a damage. What can Martin do here? I just, I, I think I'm just wishing that he has a Tranquility because I don't think he does. I think he's just going to pass here and that would be a huge problem because that means he's passing with four untapped lands. So that means he's going to take four damage next turn. That is bad. Anyway, there's the pass to Niels. Niels finding another mountain. He's probably going to cast some dragons. He's got to disintegrate in hand as well. There another power surge. Oh, this card is so brutal in this matchup. 
There we see an IC manipulator. So we could actually use the IC to tap down the wall of swords and you know just attack here with uh with the uh with the dragon whelp. He's actually not doing it, he's just gonna pass turn. Interesting. Look at that, he's dropping to five. That is so bad. That is so bad. Power surge, of course, two power surges there. So he's taking extra damage, playing a planes. I mean, it's probably gonna be over, you know. Power surge is just dominating this matchup so far. Okay, tapping four mana. No, a lot more because there's a mana flare there. So <laughs> he's tapping tons of mana. Remember, every land he taps gives double. So planes is two white instead of one white. It would be cool if he could like play out a big force of nature or something. That would be kind of sweet. He does also play with the Shivan Dragon, by the way. But even if he does, and he still has untapped lands, he's going to take double damage for them because of the two power surges on the board. So end of end step, he's going to tap down the artillery. So he's using the artillery to damage Niels, putting him on 13, but he's going to take three as well. What's he up to? Tapping tons of mana. Oh, Hurricane. Oh, that's so cool. Does he have enough here? Seven, nine, 11, 13. No, oh, I think he can hit him for 12. He misses. He misses one point, right? I think players are discussing it. I think he's missing one point. Four, seven, nine, 11, 13. Yeah, missing one point. That's so unfortunate. You know what? I'm just gonna say draw and we're just gonna go to game three. Why not? Why not? Let's go. I wanna see more action with these decks. Game number three. And despite the fact that Sheevan Dragon has already won this matchup, I just wanna see Fajern Enchantress actually doing something in game number three. That's what I'm hoping for. We've seen the Sheevans, we saw the shenanigans, we saw Power Surge. Now I'm hoping that we saw Castles, you know, we saw Lay Druids, but I'm really hoping for Fajern Enchantress that contributes something to the match here. A good opening by Niels, by the way, with that soul ring. Oh, beautiful. An alpha chaos orb. Yum, yum. Just these beautiful cards. Are we going to see a dragon whelp here, by the way, turn number two? Oh, are we going to see a shatter? That is so brutal. Tossing that shatter there on the table like it's nothing. Oh, man, that is unfortunate. Because it's such a good answer card, of course, in the deck of Martin. There is a Birds of Paradise. I'm ex just expecting a burn here on the birds. Disintegrate or a Bolt. Bolt would be the classic move, of course. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, Bolt the Bird. So the bird's gone and we see a Dragon Whelp. I mean, this deck of, of Niels is just too strong in this matchup. And I'm always favoring the underdog. I'm sorry, it's just uh, something that I do. Maybe you recognize that as well, but I have to cheer for the underdog, I hope that Martin somehow finds a way out of this. We already saw in game two that he almost got a draw, which I thought was quite spectacular. He was seen attack for four by Niels, by the way, and no follow-up play. Interesting, so he's choosing to keep his mana open. What does that mean? Maybe he's got another bolt in hand and he just quickly wants to bolt a creature if it comes. We see more lands being dropped here by Martin. All the planes are altered, it seems. Beautiful altars. I believe by Jesper Mirfors himself but I'm not 100% sure if they're all done by him. And there's another mountain. So he's got six mana. He can play Sheevan. He can play Sheevan. And that means we're going to see a Sheevan. Oh, <laughs> devastating. He's going to attack for two here, putting Martin on 14. Yeah, and there's just little he can do. I mean, it's probably going to be over. This is a really short game number three here, but I just still wanted to show you. I hope you understand. I was just... Hoping for a miracle, I guess. But it is always just beautiful to look at alpha cards. I mean, these collections are amazing. Tapping say, Oh, Stream of Life! That is so cool. Stream of Life for 5, I believe. So it's going to go back up to 19. Too bad here for Martin that uh, this is one of the games that Niels doesn't have his Mana Flare. And look at that hand. He's going to attack first. He can pump, of course, the Dragon Whelp and the Sheevan so he can deal, oh my god, 12 points of damage. That is super cool. So a Sheevan Dragon of 10-5 attacking here. That is brutal. Martin going down to 7. 
I mean, I do believe that Martin also has his Shivan in hand, but he doesn't have his second red mana. There we see a Sarah Angel. Okay, that's something. I mean, he's basically dead already. Maybe, maybe Niels... I mean, the Shivan Dragon text says that Shivan likes to play with its food, so maybe he's going to let him live. I doubt it, though. Nope, that's it. Oh, no, Force of Nature in hand. That would have been so cool to see Force in action. Man, this is a bit of an anti-climax, people. I was hoping to show you that Force of Nature. I was hoping to see the Force of Nature, but it's not to be. Anyway, thank you, Martin and Niels, for uh, sharing your beautiful alpha cards right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And that was the episode for today. Now, if you like the Alpha 40 uh, decks and you like Alpha 40 League and stuff, but you don't have enough Alpha cards to build a deck like myself, then I guess you can still enjoy these matches. And if you have a deck and you want to see more decks uh, in action, then also you can enjoy more matches right here on Timmy Talks. There is a beautiful playlist that's probably popping up right now. So you can click on there that will take you to more Alpha only matches. I also have an Alpha beta only playlist uh, on this channel as well. And I'll put that in the description below. So check the description for more playlists and stuff like that if you wanna see more black bordered goodness right here on Timmy Talks. And before you leave, I would like to ask you to like and to share and to comment here. Um, all these things are free and they really help the channel move forward. So I would really, really appreciate it. And of course, a shout out to everybody that is always leaving a comment. Thank you so much for doing that. You're helping. Timmy Talks grow because by leaving a comment, you're telling YouTube, the algorithm of YouTube, hey man, this is cool content and then YouTube will reward me for that by, uh, yeah, by, by featuring my videos and plugging my videos more on YouTube. So really a comment goes a long way and it is completely free. Um, if you're new to the channel, by the way, please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Of course, only subscribe if you want to, right? Don't do it. Don't do it because I tell you to do it. Do it if you want to. Um, before you go, one last little meanie thing, and that is Timmy Talks also has a Patreon page. And via the Patreon page, you can become a patron of the channel. And by doing that, you can actually support Timmy Talks financially and help me keep the channel afloat. So please consider doing that. It already starts with $1 a month. And if you join for that single dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You get access to all the Timmy Talks online events. Um, you also get your name mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the Ik het dus, ik het dus, somba kazee.